this is the Creative Soulpreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Nick Demas. Let's go. Okay, my friend, welcome back to the Creative Soulpreneur Podcast. I've got a really fun guest today who, this is a real full circle moment for me personally, because this amazing human being was the podcast editor of the very first podcast I was ever a guest on. I'd never been on a podcast before. I was beyond nervous because this was a quote unquote big podcast Mm -hmm. in the industry. I had no idea what I was doing, how to tell my story on this podcast. And she was like the angel in the room. You were the oh my angel. God. I love that. Yeah, I love the this, show. Thank you so much. And I love that this is such a like, you know, personal full circle moment for you because I totally forgot about that. You know, like we, I mean, we had like several people. I didn't know it was your first, first podcast. So I'm so happy that I was able to support you in any way, you know, when you were doing that. And you were so amazing anyways. You're a natural, seriously. So I, anyways, it was amazing. But it was my first and you were just so kind. And I had met you before that, obviously, but that moment sort of solidified for me the kindness and the type of human being that you are. Mm, And I um, am forever grateful to you. So I wanted to start this episode by saying thank you and gratitude for that moment, but also for coming and being a guest today. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for the warm welcome, for the story. And like, seriously, it is my absolute joy and pleasure to be able to just do this. So like, thank you for the opportunity to be able to talk today and spread, you know, my message and also just help people on the other side of the screen or of the other side of the speaker, (laughs) whatever they are, however they are consuming this. Yeah. So we're going to get into your message in a second, particularly surrounding uh, and stay with us here, imposter syndrome, which the big, I call it the big IS. It's like, it's like the disease, right? It's like, is disease. Oh We're going to get God. to that. But I have a question for you first. And this yes. is a question that I ask my guests, which is, what does creativity mean to you? Oh my goodness. I love this question. I think, okay. I, so creativity means to me personally, and this is just a very personal answer just letting just being a channel for Mm. whatever wants to come through through me and that's how I have you know like I I mean I I, you know like I used to be like in arts and crafts and whatever like when I was a kid and then I you know after you know like we go through things and whatever it is I I step into this business and as you know as creative I mean you have to be creating content and whatever right and I used to tell myself oh, I am not creative enough I don't have ideas and whatever it is right and like and then I step into like I am just a conduit right I'm a channel so that is what creativity became for me just like allowing whatever was coming through you know in in terms of message in terms of like things that I wanted to share with them whatever it is just come through and be expressed you know, which actually ties so well into imposter syndrome and our topic that I love, which which is fear of being seen, fear of being visible, right? Because uh, a lot of those two, like, just block so much our creativity and the the genius and the gifts that we have inside. So, yeah, I think that's my my answer for you. (laughs) Yeah, and it's a really good one. And it does tie directly to what we're going to talk about because you mentioned that you used to think oh, I don't have, I'm not creative or I don't have creative ideas. Mm -hmm. How how did you go about overcoming that or unblocking that? Well, uh, I first say, first and foremost, you know, like, so I am a subconscious reprogramming coach and like as part of that, you know, I know how the subconscious mind works, right? And I always will go back to, wait a second, you know, my words, our words are so, so, um, I don't know, programming, you know, like they are literally casting spells, right? All the time. So I knew the more I would tell myself, I am not creative. I don't have good ideas. And I would be stuck in that thought, the more I would create of that. So the first and foremost, like, it's like, okay, I need to stop this thought. Like literally that is not true. There's so many, so much evidence in my world 
that I have been creative, that I have creative ideas, that things come to me. I have had a podcast before. I mean, like, come on, this is just a thought, right? Like that my mind is offering me that is trying to protect me, that is trying to uh, like make me avoid, you know, being busy or whatever it is, right? The mind is always trying to protect us. So like it may send certain thoughts to protect, right? So that was step number one. It's like, okay, this is a thought, but I won't believe it because I, I know there's evidence in my world and in my past that I have been creative. So then I went to reprogram that and I have this, uh, and actually I have told this story before I think in my Instagram, but basically I have this hypnosis recording that I created for myself really, but it's a freebie that I offer people that just comes into my world that has fill in the blanks, you know, so like you can just repeat any affirmation, which I call like hypnos hypnosis, hypno affirmations in that and just plug it in. And then you go into embodying that version of you that is creative. you see yourself, you feel yourself, you a hundred percent drop into the body of yourself as that creative, you know, like in my case, right. As a creative, creative soul. So I have oh, so many ideas. I'm talking about this and I see myself in all these different situations. And I did that for like, I don't even remember, like a month straight, every single day, dropping into that. And literally just with the one thing I was telling myself is like, I, uh, something like I have uh, a, a powerful ideas come to me they easily every day. And literally, I feel like the floodgates open for me as, as you mm. know, as I was doing that. I stopped repeating all this other stuff. And I, every morning I would embody that version of myself that was creative that I could see, you know, in my, in my uh, man's mind side, as I was like with my eyes closed. Right. And I swear to God that after that, the creative, you know, the creative flow started because the creative flow was already there. I was just blocking it with this thought. Right. So if you were to apply, like for people that are listening to this, I think the first step in everything that you're telling yourself any type of thought that is repeating in your head about anything imposter syndrome thoughts included you yeah. know it's like first just know that that's just a thought you don't have to believe it your mind will like I think we think 80,000 90,000 thoughts every day and like most of them are negative you know <laughs> welcome that's to being human incredible <laughs> right yeah right and like can you imagine you know if you were into like just believe the crazy things that your mind says every single time. I mean, we would be not doing anything seriously. So I think that's step number one, realizing that your mind is always going to offer things, right? That's what the mind does. It's like they create, it creates thoughts, it creates emotions, it creates sensations in the body. It's going to offer you things, right? As it is um, living life and you get to choose to see that, be a, become aware of that and say like, oh, wait a second, that's just a thought. I don't have to believe this about mm -hmm. myself. And sometimes I know that that can be hard when like something has been really ingrained in us, like a limiting belief or whatever has been really ingrained in us. But that's always the first step. It's like, okay, this is just a thought, you know, and I'm just going to cancel that. I'm going to see all the evidence for the opposite, right? It's like, actually, I have been like this and like that and whatever. And then obviously you can go into subconscious reprogramming, like which is that visualization that you can do embodying and all that stuff, right? But I think this is something that actually everyone can apply for any thoughts that they are having that are, are just blocking their creativity or blocking also action, right? Because that's our thing that we were talking right before we started. It's like, there's so many things that paralyze us or slow as slow as, slow as down, you know? And those are the ones thing, the things that we want to remove from the from our path, right? So that we can actually put our gifts into the world, put our zone of genius, whatever it is, talent into the world. Yeah, and and imposter syndrome is one of those things that holds us back. So what yes. is actually, like what is, what is imposter syndrome actually? What is it? Yeah. We talk about it all the time. This is a phrase we throw out yeah, all exactly. the time. But what is it really? Yeah, I mean, imposter syndrome literally is just like a umbrella, like I guess an umbrella term or topic, you know, that encompasses basically thoughts that of self-doubt that we feel our, about ourselves. But it's also like some behaviors, like for example, for example, putting all your accomplishments, the things that you have overcome, your wisdom, your talents, like literally all the juicy stuff that you have, and putting it to the side and say and saying like not owning it, not acknowledging that you created that, that you, that is part of your past, right? 
and totally dismissing all the amazing talents, gifts, I mean, experiences, wisdom that you already have and just minimizing. It's like, oh no, that was not a big deal. It's like kind of like, oh yeah, like that? No, it's like, oh, I'm trying to achieve this, you know, and I have all these resources and you literally choose to see the gap. That's how I see imposter syndrome. It's like when our mind minds are stuck in self-doubt thoughts, right? Self-doubt about like ourselves, our capabilities, our deserve, deserving, deservingness, the, how much we yeah, deserve. Deservedness, yeah. Deservingness. Um, and stuck in those thoughts. And because it's stuck in those thoughts, the only thing we can see is a gap, is who we are not, what we don't have, the experience that we don't have, you know? And we choose instead, you know, instead of like focusing on all the things that we already have, that we already experienced. So that's how I see it. Actually, I was just talking about this on my Instagram and I always notice that every single person that I have helped uh, to overcome imposter syndrome literally has that that same uh, pattern, right? They are totally focusing on the things that they don't have or that who they think they are not mm. and totally dismissing everything that they have experienced their wisdom experiences like challenges everything and and yeah basically is that and like getting so stuck in that pattern of like looking to that that side the gap that they can totally they totally dismiss the rest yeah it's like a disconnect there's a disconnect there right and i remember when i first came into the online space you may even remember this because you were around i had this disconnect in that I had all of this experience, this knowledge, all of like all of my years in the theater, all my business experience. And yet somehow in my mind, it didn't relate to being an online entrepreneur. Like yeah. that was a separate thing. I, I hadn't accomplished that yet. I hadn't achieved yeah. that six, seven figure business yet. So therefore I, but I, I couldn't focus on anything, but that gap, like I could, there was a disconnect between those two things. And it really took me some time to honor what had come before and realize, Mm -hmm. oh, all of that is actually part of this. There's no way I could have actually stepped into this space with, with this much, uh, authentic power had Mm -hmm. I had, I not had the experiences before. Exactly. That's exactly it. Exactly how you describe it. It's a disconnect, right? And I see this so much where literally exactly like you're saying, you know, like, oh yeah, I, I did this. I achieved that, whatever it is. And, but that doesn't matter, right? It's not there. It's almost like it's invisible because I still feel like a failure here because I didn't achieve this and because it, this is not working and because it's so hard and because it's so new. It's like anything new. And this was the other thing that we were talking about in before we started recording, right? Like any new level of visibility of vulnerability of putting ourselves out there any new project any new dream any new goal you know higher goal is going to take you to the edge and that edge is literally where this imposter syndrome can flare up and I think that the best thing that someone can do in that moment is just know okay so this is just happening because I am stepping outside of my comfort zone. I am doing something new. I am learning learning something new. So it feels, I feel wobbly in this new path, right? Like I don't feel like I have all the things and it's okay. Let me just get in my toolbox, right? And all the things that I have done before and see, and exactly what you're saying, honor that. I, you know, I love saying just own it, own everything that has happened before, because the only thing that I, I have noticed that can create imposter syndrome is if someone is stuck thinking that something that happened in the past was a failure and they can only see it as a failure that also when they are you know stepping into new directions into your higher higher I know goals uh, things that they want to achieve they carry that as like oh I failed you know Mm. and like maybe I'm not good at this or maybe this will fail as well right so it's also like overcoming imposter syndrome as well comes with owning the past and even how those quote-unquote failures or things, failures to begin with, like in my perspective, are are literally just unmet expectations. 
literally just that, right? Because like, what yeah. are we calling failures? Like, oh, I have this, I had this goal that I randomly said, you know, because whatever, <laughs> let me just see what happens, you know? And then I didn't meet the random goal that I said. And, I, and then I'm calling that a failure, but literally it's just an unmet expectation, right? And just owning what that taught you, like how did you grow from that? What things you wouldn't repeat? What things you want to do? Just taking that as contrast, as as lessons, as learning and all this stuff and really own it, right? And taking it with you moving forward. So yeah, that's I got already got a little into like all the things that, that come in, in play, I think, for overcoming imposter syndrome but that one is is a good important one it's like also making peace with the past right like whatever happened in the past just owning it taking the lessons and running with it and yeah yeah the past is tricky right because we can sometimes get stuck like you said in in, in that old story mm-hmm. and yet that story it propels us forward to the new one that if you can learn exactly. that lesson, if you can take that lesson with you and learn from it, then it cre- you're able to then create something that you could never have done without having had that quote unquote failure. Exactly. I think of it often, you said unmet expectations. I often think of it as for me, as lessons on the path, ways <laughs> to, you know, ways, ways to grow. Typically when I have failed and there have been some failures. Some have been very, very, in fact, I was just talking the other day about one that was so huge and so visible. I was on, uh, I did a TV pilot to be Mm -hmm. as a host, uh, for, uh, this thing called the Broadway fashion report. And this was like 10 years ago. And it came up in my feed, you know, like the, you know, how on Mm -hmm. your Facebook, it'll be like your memory of 10 years ago. And it was like 10 years ago, you were a figure. That's what came up, you know? (laughs) And what it was is it was this TV pilot and it got, it, it did air, but mm-hmm. it was terrible mm-hmm. now. And it was, and I do mean like, I can look back now at the time it was painful, but mm-hmm. and it wasn't my fault per se. It was a combination of things, but mm-hmm. I learned so much from that experience. And I, before that I was scared to do it. Speaking of imposter syndrome, I didn't know if I was even capable. Mm-hmm. And what I learned from that was I was capable but that it needed to be in the right circumstances and the right way. What was I doing on a fashion show? Like, that's not my thing, right? Like, wh- huh? Like me sitting there and, and dissecting the red carpet. I had to learn that, oh, it can't just be be a host on something. It's gotta be something that's completely in alignment with my soul. So, and I also learned, know who you're gonna be working with. Also demand that there is a chemistry test when you have co-hosts, because I had co-hosts. I learned all of these valuable lessons Mm -hmm. that I now can take forward so that I can, in many ways, overcome the imposter syndrome. Exactly. I love that. And you know what? Like, we are only able to see those lessons and see all that richness of those experiences when we choose to do that, when we stop seeing them as like, oh, this like painful thing, because when we just see the painful part, right? Like we are just stuck in that emotion in like, don't not almost like resisting and not wanting to think about it. It's like, no, it's like, that was horrible, whatever it is. And it's only when we can actually accept it and say like, okay, F it, it happened, whatever. And then really see it as a opportunity for growth, for evolution, for learning all those, all those things that you learn, right? Only when we can choose to do that and make peace with it, is that we actually get to own and embrace and honor all that stuff and bring it to to bring it forward. And before that, it's almost like an, an, an open tab, you know, that is just like weighing on you on the back of your of your head, you know, that is just not allowing you to move forward, right? I will say that took some time. You know, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. You know, it was painful because it was embarrassing. I was embarrassed. Mm-hmm. Um, it was definitely a painful time. So it took me a bit, like I now I, 10 years later, can look at it and laugh and I can actually say, oh, it really mm-hmm. helps me. But I will say that, you know, it's not an overnight quick fix thing, right? This is something that takes some time. Sometimes, sometimes you can, you can mm-hmm. snap and it's there. This was yeah. very painful because it, it hit my core issue, which I think is the underneath, you know, maybe a bit of imposter syndrome is that was my core issue of feeling the need and want and desire to be seen. Mm-hmm. And there I was, that was an unmet because I, I was being seen in a way that I didn't want to be seen. 
that makes sense. Yeah, almost like it took, yeah, it got the the shadow, kind of like, yeah, the shadow into the yeah. light, you know? And it's just like, yeah, okay, so I love that you actually just touch upon this because that's our experience that I have had, right? Like a lot of times, I always feel like everything comes in levels, right? Like, so there's like quick shifts that we can do in terms of how we think. And then suddenly we are on our way you know, perfect. I'm taking action. I already overcome, overcame that, that thought I shifted, but exactly what you're saying when something that happens touches upon something that is deep, you know, deep within you. So like any sense of like, you know, you wanted to be seen and you were like, you wanted to be seen, but now you were seen in a totally different way than how you want it. Right. Or there's people that, for example, like have had very painful experiences in the past of rejection right so like then when they come to just do this new thing all that stuff is just coming to the surface but sometimes we are not even aware of it we just feel the emotions we just feel the the self-doubt like the we just see notice our thoughts and feeling the anxiety or the nervousness or whatever it is, or the, the stress, whatever is coming, whatever emotion is coming as like with imposter syndrome, right? For you. And we only see that, but then what we're not seeing is what is below the surface, right? And that's why. So one thing that I do different, I guess, in, in terms of imposter syndrome is like, and all the things that I do is that, okay, awesome. Like these are the behaviors, the thoughts are coming up in the surface, right? That is the tip of the iceberg. That's a reality. Then underneath that is like, what created these emotions, thoughts, you know, behaviors that people are engaging, you know, like engaging in, right? So as I was saying, sometimes people will just shift super fast, uh, either they, when they have been doing a lot of subconscious work or like coaching work, like kind of, you know, thought like shifting their thoughts and like they can just get going but there will be people and that's why I want to touch upon those two things right there will be people that will feel stuck in those yeah. patterns of thinking in those emotions or kind of like what you like the experience that you had right where like it really felt very deep and it took you a while and that's when I 100% recommend working with someone that can help you process that and also unravel that it's like why is this affecting me so much I will, I will say, you know, that most of the things that affect us are a very deep, deep, intense level in the, in the present are a hundred percent connected to something that happened in the past or some sense of like, uh, not feeling good enough in some sort of way within us, you know, that we need to clear from the root. So I love working with both, right? Like coaching and like reframing things and like shifting how you talk and all that stuff is very valuable and being aware of your thoughts and how you talk to yourself and how you talk about life and the things that you're doing, right? All of that is really important. The language that you use in conscious awareness, right? But there's also the other part, right? The the emotional part, the subconscious, all that the stuff that the subconscious has stored since we are in the womb, all the experiences that we have had in, in the past, that when we're stepping outside of our comfort zone, our subconscious mind is literally doing like pattern rec recognition. So, oh my goodness, this looks exactly like what happened in fifth grade when like blah, 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 you know? And then it's like, alarm, <laughs> you know? And it's just literally sometimes sending people into like panic attacks and like, very intense emotions right so like I always say if you feel stuck and or like in any emotions or patterns of thinking you know like just know that that could be the cause right something that is underneath yeah and it's scientific I mean it's the amygdala part of the brain that is like lights up right yeah it, it says these this alarm it's like yes. be before you even realize that the alarm has gone off as if you were walking to a house and mm -hmm. you are the like then you're the the neighbor, let's say you you tell your neighbor to go over to, to your house, they're going to open the door and your alarm's going to go off because it, it it thinks it's danger, right? Because you've set the alarm without even realizing it, even yeah. though it's your neighbor and you told them to go over there, it's still yeah. setting off an alarm, right? Exactly. Because it, it just is, it's automatic. It's automatic. Exactly. Yeah. And that's like, I think also that's what happens with like in terms of fear, for example, you know, the, and funny thing also, I also think imposter syndrome, it is connected to fear, right? Fear of mm -hmm. like, 
not being seen as how you want it, fear of failing, fear of fucking it up, fear of like, well, I hope I can curse. <laughs> oh, we say fuck here. You're good. Perfect. <laughs> you know, fear of like all the things. That's like just imposter syndrome at the, at the core of imposter syndrome is literally just fear of rejection of not being like or whatever it is. And it's like, okay, am I good enough to do this? Can I do this, right? It's like, so it's all these different fears. That's a reality. Almost everything's so funny because I made a list of like all the things, the problems, problems, issues, whatever it is that I usually work with people. And I made this like fun list. And then I was like, oh, oh my goodness, this is connected to fear. This is gonna <laughs> literally everything was connected to fear. So at the end, I was like, I guess I just tell people, you know, break through their fears. <laughs> yeah, because if you think about it, you know, I mean, if you if you do that very like overly simplistic. Uh, sort of spiritual teaching of everything is either love or fear, right? Your problems are all your fears. And that which is is not your problem is love. You know, there is that very sort of oversimplistic, simple, yeah. simplest, what's the word I'm trying to say? Simplistic. There simplistic, we go. Yes. But it's actually true. It is true. Yeah. Yeah. You know, at the end yeah. of the day, like you said, it all goes back to those fears. Yeah. And a lot of that is rooted in that past that that your childhood yeah you know, we didn't get enough love in our childhood <laughs> as the you know as they say at the show is right yeah it's so funny I mean and seriously sometimes I will say it's like it can be like I mean uh, yeah not getting enough love like however you want to define that I, a lot of sometimes I literally have like when I am you know helping people we sometimes scout something kind of like discover something in the past you know and we just have the headline and literally it's just like a simple it's like oh yeah like I was reading this in front of my class and everybody laughed at me right and like these are little kids that are like five six years old they're laughing about everything right but our little brain at that time just made that mm. mean that it's like oh I'm like I just was rejected you know they don't like me I'm different or all these like different meanings right so it's just funny because I, like a lot of times you know people will go back in and think it's like oh I actually don't feel like I have had any like traumatic experiences but then like we ask that subconscious that knows everything you know and and it's literally this little thing that happened here and that little thing that happened there you know and that is just triggering this anxiety or this sense of unworthiness or this like self-doubt or like this you know I mean, feeling like I don't deserve it. I don't deserve it, or I am not good enough. And the funny thing also is what happens is when we are a little stuck, <laughs> when we get a little stuck with these thoughts, that what happens is that the subconscious mind is obviously has a store. I mean, I don't even know, billions, I guess at this point of like data, right? Since you were in the womb and also you get also stuff from your parents, from your ancestors, right? So like, Welcome to being human. You have so much stuff in there. <laughs> so how we become aware of things, you know, when you have this massive data, like data storage, you know, is that we become aware only of a little piece of that, you know, and that what determines what piece of that we're aware of is those thoughts, those beliefs that like programming that our sense, our self-concept, our identity, right? What we're so what we're saying about ourselves that's what's actually allowing us to see or not see what is in there so that's why going back to what I said in the in the beginning right some people like literally people are just focusing on the gap why sometimes we get like stuck focusing only on what we don't have who we are not and whatever it is is because we are thinking it's like oh yeah I am not good enough or I'm not whatever enough to be able to, to do this or and then automatically that's all our mind can see right yeah. totally disregarding stuff and I can I filter all the stuff that is not that and I just see what matches my thinking my beliefs my thoughts my self-concept and I can only see that so when people are really stuck and like conscious just like a conscious coaching conversation won't do it that's when I suggest people to just okay dive deep into the subconscious and reprogram this do the emotional clearing that you have to do, do the processing of whatever happening happened in the past so you can heal the past. And then a lot of this stuff that comes up, the thoughts, the beliefs, or whatever, literally just fade away. And I'm not saying that imposter syndrome will never come up, but the the intensity of it is so much less. Yeah, it's so that's, much more manageable. That's what I say the toolbox is for, right? Mm -hmm. You've got these toolbox of, of tools that 
that help with the subconscious. So mm -hmm. what, are, what are some tools that you use? I think you can tell me if I'm wrong, but I think hypnosis might be one of them. Yes, 100%. Yeah, hypnosis is one of them. I also use EFT tapping. I really love EFT yeah. tapping to let it to, I mean, a lot of people don't know how powerful it is, but basically you can do everything with it. Literally let go of fear, phobias, I mean, clear past trauma, all these different things. And all of these different tools are actually insanely powerful when used like fully. So hypnosis is the same thing. Like if you know how to reframe and like, process past trauma you can absolutely do that with that as well then rapid resolution therapy and nlp so basically those are like the the four tools that i use and and then people ask like oh wait a second but like what are you going to use on me and whatever it is or and i'm like i let my intuition and the sessions guide what exactly i use with people because i will say that one thing i have been but i have noticed is that some things work for some people and some things don't work with those people so like Literally, I have tried to do the same hypnosis thing with like someone that had like a similar situation and it literally didn't work at all. You know, Amen, so sister. Amen. You got me preaching over here. I got my hand up in the air because it has to be your toolbox that works for you. There is no yeah. one path for, for anyone. No. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's why, you know, it's why I teach several as well. I, I teach pranayama breath work. I teach mm -hmm. creativity exercises. Yeah. I, you know, I teach all these somatic practices that are yeah. very different than the ones that you actually teach. I'm like, Ooh, I need to come and learn, <laughs> you know, X, Y, or Z from, you know, to add to my toolbox because when working with clients, it really is what works for you yes not even necessarily what works for me i can teach you what works for me mm -hmm. and try different modalities with you so that you can find what is going to make that shift or difference for you so i love that you share that philosophy i really do yeah and i also i mean and also like i have these four tools right there's so many more just like you're saying yeah. you have your toolbox that is totally different and then there is also psyche and like rtt yeah. and like so many things right so i always tell people it's like whatever you're going through whatever it is whatever is blocking you whatever is coming up for you try sometimes you have to try different things you know and see what works for you Another amen, sister. Amen. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> All right. So I do a quick round here. Final three questions. Yes. Are you ready? Oh, great. I am ready. Okay. I'm excited. I love questions. <laughs> the first question of the final three is, who do you want to collaborate with that you haven't yet? Oh, my goodness. How much time we have? <laughs> <laughs> Who would I love to collaborate with? I have a list of people here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, collaborate like what? Just like be kind of like. In any way, shape or form. This could be be on their podcast. It could be to write a book together. It could be to, to create a course together. It could be to like simply like, you know, go to the beach and have a, have a cocktail together. I don't care. Collaborate. Oh my God. Okay. I don't know. Okay. So I would love at some point to be able to interview I have like three people here that I really admire mm -hmm. so it would be like a dream to be able to collaborate with them in that sense you know I would love to just interview them it's like Joe Dispenza Bruce Lipton and Tony Robbins <laughs> love it love 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 okay are, yeah second question which you might have just answered is mm -hmm. what is your next great manifestation Oh my God, <laughs> my next great manifestation actually is not related, but one thing that I am, uh, yeah, I, I, I am calling in is speaking in on stage at a live event. And I would love to do that by the end of the year in one or two big stages. Love. Yeah. And they would and love you. Love they would you. absolutely love you. Cause I've seen you talk Thank on you. stage and you're, you're quite talented. Thank you so much for saying that. Final question. It's a fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. I am. Oh my God. I am unstoppable. <laughs> I love it. I love that. That is like my mantra. It's a good one. Cause it, and I think it's really super fitting for you because that mm -hmm. is how I see you as like this train. I, you know, I've been able to witness your journey over the last, you know, four and a half years 
and almost five years I've known you now. And I, I see you as this train that no. was started when it first started, it was like, you know, the little, what they call the little engine that could, you remember that, that, that book as a kid, maybe, I don't know if you had it, but it was like, I think mm -hmm. I can, I think I can, I think I can. And then you were starting at, I think I can, I think I can. And now it's like, I can, I can, I can, I can, yeah. I can, I can, I'm unstoppable. And I love that. I'll throw one more that also like comes to me sometimes like I am a force of nature. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And I love that you just said that because, you know, like we're telling ourselves so many things and like sometimes we just wonder, do people perceive me like that? You know, and it's so cool to just like be reflected, you know, that just so thank you for saying that. I really, yeah. really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. I am here to change the world. I'm here to, yeah, just like I spread this message of like transformation. And I just, I am so relentlessly passionate about that, you know, so thank you. Thank you You're so welcome. much for everything. Thank you for being here. One person at a time, right? We change one life and it, it yeah. spreads. It's the ripple and you're doing it. So I, I honor you and I appreciate you being here. Uh, where can people find you? Where can, where can my audience find you? Yes. Okay. So I will just give my handle, my Instagram handle. They can find me there. They can uh, tag me or like, if they have any questions at all is I am Diana Sofia and I'm going to throw a curveball there because Sophia is with F of Frank so I am and then Diana is just like Diana like that D-I-A-N-A -A, and then is Sophia is S-O-F-I-A great I am there's your second one I, I your am. next one I am Diana, Diana Sophia, Sophia. <laughs> <laughs> I love it unstoppable <laughs> Diana Sophia my friend be sure to tag Diana at like she said at Diana Sophia, I am Diana Sophia with your questions and yes. comments. And you can also tag me at the Nick Demas as well. Thank you so very much for being here. I know that you have lots and lots of choices in this online space. There's lots of places to listen to podcasts, lots of different perspectives. And I appreciate you so much for being here. I'll see you next time.